Now we want to approximate the area of a plane region. And there are three important summation formulas we need. If we take the sum of i, i goes from 1 to n. Our answer will always be n times n plus 1 over 2. If we add up i squareds, we wind up with n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. If we take i cubed and add those together, we get n squared times n plus 1 squared over 4. Can we use that to find a specific example? i goes from 1 to 10. We can break this up into two parts. The summation of i squared, i goes from 1 to 10, minus the summation of 1, i goes from 1 to 10. Now this formula here, i squared is exactly as the second formula, so we can replace n with 10 times 10 plus 1 times 2 times 10 plus 1, all divided by 6, minus now this one formula does not apply up here, however we have, we're going to be adding 1 10 times, so we have 10 times 1. So if we try to make this nicer to work with here, we have 10 times 11, 21 over 6 minus 10. We can divide both numerator and denominator by 2. We can divide by 3. So we have 5 times 7 is 35. 35 times 11 minus 10. 35 times 11 is 3. 85 minus 10 gives us 375. Now how do we apply this to the area under a curve? We sum from i goes from 1 to 10 of i squared minus 1. It turns out if we have the curve, and this is the equation f of x equals x squared minus 1. If we want the area under the curve, we could begin by, say, drawing a rectangle underneath here and drawing a rectangle here and finding the area of each of these two rectangles. But there's a large error term here. So in and take area of this, this, and this and find the area of these three rectangles. Of course we could continue and every one number we could draw a rectangle for. And each of these rectangles we could find the area and add it up. Now you're saying there's still an error term. And yes there is an error term but we could approximate the sum by adding all these together and next time we'll look at how to get rid of this error and make it become zero.